FAMU is a microcast of life. And I mean, if you really think about it, like freshman week is a dream. Like you, we come on campus, we're partying, we're self, we're just, just living it up. And then all of a sudden classes kick in and a lot of us get our GPA in the dirt before we even get out the gates. And a lot of times, companies and like a lot of these people probably can contest to it. Like if you have a 3.0, that just gets you in the door. You know what I mean? Like, and, and a lot of us are getting 2.5s, 2.6s. And we really need to start taking our academics more seriously as well as campus involvement. Um, I feel like we almost have a sense of entitlement. Um, I was talking to uh, the, the general manager for the source. Um, I don't want to mess her name up. Uh, but she was telling me that, like, how am I going to pay you $60,000? Uh, and how are you going to command $60,000 coming out? And you haven't even been on an internship. You haven't done anything on campus to remotely even deserve the money that I'm giving to you. So with that said, I look at myself and I, and I say, I, I think I've worked hard to get where I am. But I look at a lot of my peers, a lot of us till our junior year, we're just starting to think about possibly getting an internship. Now the recession's kicked in, so the people who weren't even proactive sophomore year don't even have the internship. You know what I mean? So like they're going into their senior year with no internship, barely making a 3.0 and expecting to come out making 60 grand. It's just not going to work that way. So I, I look at a lot of people on the panel and they broke a lot of barriers. Like that, everybody in this panel wasn't given anything. They all broke doors, and I feel like our generation has everything in our hands to really grow and enhance, but we're not really going out and fully capitalizing on it. So when I look at the state of the black student, I say we got to do better. Great job for those questions. We're going to direct the next question is also to our student panelists, but if there are any other panelists that would like to tackle it, feel free. Apart from seeking employment, what do you consider to be the major obstacles of a black student? What can a student do to overcome such obstacles? You want to go first? So when I sit down and I really do the self-reflection, I say the biggest obstacle right now for our generation and ourselves is ourselves. Um, I think that the stereotype threats that we perceive in society, we, we, we internalize them and then it affects our production. My sister's doing her PhD on how stereotypes affect productivity and affect the work in the workplace and affect the like, practices in the workplace. So if you take it to a, a small level at school, I feel like our biggest obstacle is ourselves. Last summer I had the ability to intern with Procter & Gamble and literally that's true. I, I, I was literally the only black person there and I felt like I was talented. I've done a lot on campus. They really, I was highly recruited by them. But when I got there, I was so uncomfortable socially and I put so much mental barriers on myself that I was unable to perform to the level that I performed there. And that's why internships are important because I won't make that same mistake at J.P. Morgan or something, you know what I'm saying? So I think the biggest obstacle that we have is ourselves. And also, I would say that confidence is necessary and self-pride. Uh, in the chapter, we have this model. We have self pride in chapter, pride in line, pride in self. But if we really take it to a community perspective, I, I wrote it down, I say we need to have self pride in race, you need to have pride in your direct community that you live in, and you also have to have pride in self. And if we take those three mentality approaches to it, I really think that we'll overcome any obstacles in our way. Well said, well said. Um, some of the obstacles that I think uh, you know, damper our students as far as moving forward and being progressive leaders. Um, really concurs with our lack of focus, uh, our lack of drive, to really open up our door and, and look for the resources. Uh, the barriers were broken a long time ago. Uh, with Civil Rights Leaders, they, they paved the way for us. But we have to make sure that we do what we do on our standpoint in college. Um, make sure we, we actually open the door and, and walk through it, and walk through it with purpose, walk through it uh, with the mission to actually put your staff uh, on the industry, put your staff in your fields, put your staff in your heart, and uh, make sure everything moves according to plan. Um, I also think there's a lack of, uh, well not a lack, I think one obstacle that we face is uh, peer pressure. Um, our peer-to-peer -peer development, uh, certain things that we, we come to college, like uh, Tony said earlier, we come in welcome week. Uh, with some type of glorious week, a little parties and so forth and so on, but we can't look at that week as an addiction and, and our, our view on college life. Uh, we have to change. Um, greatness is, is, is brought forth in preparation. It's not brought forth in the moment. Uh, so we have to prepare and uh, stay focused on uh, our goals and, and our achievements and uh, make things happen for ourselves. Uh, good evening, I'm, I'm Joshua Fahim Radcliffe, uh, former Energy Chief of Source, and President of Power Growth Spot. Very glad to be here. And um, you know, how I look at the state of the Black Student Summit, 
standard black student, is this one of an evolutionary process? Um, <clears throat> I know, you know many of you graduating this semester, and um, I don't see like, thank God. But um, though I agree with many of the comments that were you know, spoken uh, just a little while ago, I don't think, don't, don't beat yourself too up, you know, because you're young and it's still, it's still a learning process. So, um, you know, definitely, you know, hook up with mentors who can, you know, guide you uh, in the process in terms of, you know, your career professional development. But also, when it comes to, you know, uh, the college experience, you know, I myself, I didn't go to HBC. I went to uh, a public college in New York City, went to college, and, um, you know, just as many white, you know, black students that didn't get internships, it was just as many white, you know, students that were getting internships in their last year and were struggling trying to find a job. So, you know, um, don't think that this is just a, uh, a black or Latino thing that, you know, you know how come we didn't, we're not figuring this thing out there? You know, white students are equally having those same problems. So, you know, while you're here for four years or five or, you know, going on to grad school, I would say, you know, make the most of this experience, because I know I did. Um, uh, and that this is, speaking from a person who went to quite a few different colleges in my own life, you know, my, my, in my past. So um, it was definitely, you know, a learning process. So I would say, you know, um, soak it all up. You know, I mean, I, I saw, you know, the set, Friday set, you know, I know if that was on my campus, I'd probably have problems going to class, but that's just me. But, you know, I would just say just soak it all up, but also at the same time, it's a balance, you know. Um, have fun, but also, you know, be serious and be proactive in you know, preparing for the future. Don't, don't beat yourself up too hard, you know. Definitely set goals and expectations for yourself, but, you know, realize that you're 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and you're allowed to make mistakes. Just wanted to make a quick comment. 